Awesome. So we're just going to go in here um, since it's 12.05. And this is a guide to Dapper open source APIs and SDKs for developers. And my name is Alice Gibbons. I'm a customer success engineer at Diagrid, where our mission is to boost developer productivity by providing tools and APIs for building cloud native applications. And I'm Samantha Coyle. I am a software engineer here at Diagrid. So I get to work on some of our product side of things as well as help contribute to the Dapper community. Awesome. And so today I'm just gonna walk you through what we're gonna go through. Uh, I'm gonna start with a Dapper introduction. For those of you who haven't heard of Dapper before, I'm gonna pass it over to Sam to do the demo application overview and talk a little bit about the scenario that we're trying to enable with Dapper. And then she's gonna dive into the service invocation API and some of the details around that. And then I'm gonna talk about the PubSub API and give a demo, and then we will conclude. Okay, so let's kick it off with the Dapper introduction. So it's nothing new to say that there are a ton of developer challenges that devs have to face every day when writing distributed apps. Uh, there's a number on this slide here, but things like encrypting your calls between services for distributed systems, as well as ensuring you are sending uh, messages from two multiple applications and locking down which apps can receive those messages. Um, securing access to the data layer, you know, the list really goes on. And Dapper provides APIs to help developers solve some of these issues. So actually, just a quick show of hands, who here has heard of Dapper? <laughs> okay, all right, we got one. All right, <laughs> awesome. So Dapper can be described as a portable event-driven runtime uh, that helps codify microservices best practices and building distributed apps on the cloud and on the edge. Um, and it was started in 2019 uh, by the co-founders of our company when they were at Microsoft, and then it was donated to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation um, and has been open source since the very beginning. Um, yeah. So what are the Dapper APIs? They are, there's a number, there's around 10 different building blocks that you can take advantage of today. Um, you can write them in really any language that you want to. You know, there's a list of languages on here, but you name it, .NET, JavaScript, Java, C Sharp. Uh, there are tons of SDKs as well as you can use the HTTP and gRPC APIs uh, via native clients for each of these languages. Um, here's a list of the building blocks that we have, and they can be deployed, these applications can be deployed on any uh, cloud or edge infrastructure. Typically in production, Dapper is deployed on Kubernetes. Um, however, you know, you can uh, compile Dapper without a container dependency to deploy it on virtual machines. So how does it work? Um, Dapper runs as a sidecar pattern typically. Although we are, there are um, projects out there to run it not as a sidecar, uh, it typically runs as a sidecar, and again, it can be used over gRPC or HTTP. And as mentioned, you can use you know, the native gRPC or HTTP clients uh, within the language that you're writing in, or you can take advantage of the Dapper SDKs, which provide like a few niceties on top of uh, the language. So here are some of the like APIs that you could call out to once your application has the Dapper sidecar available. And you can see they're all running over localhost due to the sidecar nature. Um, and this is really great for when moving from you know, development to production and through like staging environments because essentially the URLs you're calling out to don't actually change, right? So you can uh, you know, promote your app all the way through from dev to prod and essentially call out to the same URL across the board, which is great. So some of the URLs on here, there's a ton of different ones. We have like the invocation uh, URL, so for invoking other services uh, through service discovery, as well as like the publish and subscribe, so the publish uh, URL on here, where you're publishing messages to a topic, or even kicking off a long running workflow, um, that, like a staple workflow as well. So how do these enable, or how does Dapper work with infrastructure? So this uses uh, what's called Dapper components. And these are essentially swappable declarative infrastructure files or infrastructure configuration files um, that have the infrastructure connection data uh, embedded into them. And these are written in YAML. Um, and there are a number of them that were contributed by the community. So there's over 100 components available. Uh, they're all open source online, written in Golang. And you can check them out at the components contrib repo. And you can see a number of them on here. You know, they are typically like all the cloud providers are supported as well as components that you might use on-premises. Uh, if there is 
uh, components that are not available for the system that you're trying to write, you can easily uh, contribute back a component either to your community or to the community for everyone to use. Or you know, we have lots of people that actually write custom uh, components for proprietary systems. Um, and they are all pluggable. So Dapper has a really nice feature about it where the, these components are pluggable and you can swap them out really easily. So on here is like kind of a, uh, a typical, let's say, a distributed system. So you have maybe you have a service and it uses some sensitive information. Maybe it publishes a message on some sort of PubSub broker. And then you also have you know, a subscribing service that is storing some of this within a database or a key value store. You know, nothing, nothing crazy here, just three services. But you know, you've enabled them all with Dapper. And you know, maybe you are running this on-premises or you're running it on your local development machine and you've decided to use uh, some of these infrastructure pieces. You're using HashiCorp Vault for your secret store, you're using RabbitMQ as your PubSub broker, and you're storing your state within like a Redis cache, let's say. So what Dapper actually enables you to do is swap out these infrastructure pieces without changing any lines of code. So you know, maybe your business requirements change or you know, maybe you are uh, trying to enable um, AWS like cloud infrastructure for whatever reason. Um, you can use the, like AWS cloud native services such as KMS, uh, SNS, or like a DynamoDB with zero lines of code change from your application. And the same would be for like Microsoft Azure, right? So you could uh, swap out for Key Vault, you could swap out for an Azure service bus, and you could use Cosmos DB, again, without having to change any of your application code because you are using that Dapper abstraction. Um, and this is huge, right? In like the era of multi-cloud and like microservices applications, there are a ton of people out there who have these requirements to either be running multi-cloud or to be running on uh, multiple platforms that you know, use Dapper every day. And so there is no surprise that there's a ton of momentum around the project. Uh, there are over 22,000 GitHub stars um, on the project, and you can see this nice little contributor graph on the bottom right here of the contrib contributions month over month. Um, it is the 10th largest project within the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, um, and it is an incubating project. I think I mentioned that. And you know, there's a ton of steering committee members from different organizations. As mentioned, it was developed at Microsoft, but since then there's a ton of um, uptake from orgs like Alibaba or Intel. Um, and yeah, there are three, over 300,000 docs views a month, which we're pretty happy about. So a ton of different Dapper users from you know, giant hyperscale companies like IBM and Microsoft down to really security conscious organizations like Zscaler and Bosch. Uh, and we always like to say that Dapper is actually running on the International Space Station. So, you know, the true definition of edge computing, right? And with that, I'm actually going to hand it over to Sam to talk through our demo application and what we're going to show today. Thanks, Alice. So for the Open Source Summit, we actually made a special demo application <laughs> just for y'all. So contain your excitement. Um, and in the Dapper community, they have a repo dedicated to all of these quick starts, tutorials, and so forth that you can use. Um, but again, we wanted to make a special demo application. And there will be a link at the end in case you want to go back and check it out. And we made it to where you can run it locally as well as in a Kubernetes native environment. So with Dapper, there are 10 major building blocks that you can see here. And for the demo, we will be talking about two of them in particular. One is service to service invocation. So that's the first part that I will touch on and provide a demo on. So within Dapper, service to service invocation is really nice and you get a lot with it in Dapperizing your applications. So it gives you direct and secure communication between your different services and you get a lot right out of the gates such as observability, uh, telemetry, tracing, um, and even resiliency. So those, those are all of the things that you would have to think about if you weren't using something like Dapper. And after talking about service to service invocation, Alice will cover the pub sub components that are going on in our demo application. And with that, it's the secure scalable messaging, right, using message brokers. Uh, so again, Alice will cover, cover that part. And uh, actually, the workflows component, uh, the workflows is the number 10 uh, building block that Dapper has, and uh, some of our colleagues will be covering that here tomorrow, so definitely keep an eye out for that talk as well. All right, so to uh, share the secret, this is the motivation for our Dapper application demo that we created special for y'all. 
so what you see here is actually the Seguin Volleyball Association. And it's based out of Texas, which I'm a Southern gal, and this is a community that I like to participate in. And so you can see here, it's a really vibrant community and a lot of activity. And the image on the left is actually from Facebook. So that's how the community uh, organizers will communicate with all of the players. And you have to turn your head to look at <laughs> what court you're assigned, what your team standing is. And it's just a hot mess. And having a technical background, it kind of makes me sad to see, right? Um, because we know it can be that much better. So that's kind of the, the basis and some of the motivation. So we kind of took this idea and applied it to make a V1 um, effort to take the Dapper open source project to help this volleyball community. And just to provide some historical context, I'm not just making this up. This is, <laughs> this is me playing. This is my team. Um, so yeah, it's a really fun community. I really like to take part in it, and it makes me really happy to see an open source project looking at you know, how can we make this better. Uh, so that's kind of the motivation and storyline here with our demo today. So that brings us to what are the different pieces that are going on for our demo application. We'll start on the left with a volleyball game simulator. So I needed some way of showing to y'all how volleyball works, right? Does it, has anyone ever played volleyball before? <laughs> wow, okay, I'm actually impressed. <laughs> okay, so y'all know uh, you play up to 25 points, win by two. In our simulation, there's no cap, so you could play forever. Um, and so we have this volleyball game simulator. And actually, all of our uh, Go micros, or all of our microservices are written in Go uh, using the Dapper Go SDK. And so, yeah, our volleyball game simulator runs for 100 games, uh, and we have we have the games going pretty fast right now. Um, publishing game score updates onto a Kafka message broker, and so then we have a scoreboard service there, and it's subscribing to our game topic, so it's receiving all of these events. And again, it's using that Go uh, SDK from Dapper. And as we're getting game score, if we have game point or higher, so if it's 25 or higher, then we're saving that game state. Uh, and from there, we also have the scoreboard service retrieve state if we have the volleyball game service invoke it. And so you can see top right, we have a web UI. And so I made it, and I made backend engineer. So y'all know the drill, when a backend makes a front end, I added a little bit of color and a welcome message for y'all. That's about it. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it'll take a game ID that you're interested in, uh, and then it'll hit the volleyball game service. And what that service is doing is it's using the Dapper Go SDK to do service invocation, say, hey, hit my scoreboard service and get me that game score information. That's pretty much it. That's the gist. That's the secret. Um, so now we will go ahead and hone in on the Dapper building block for service invocation. So you can see here, these are the two main services that I will be talking about for the service invocation, which I kind of touched on already. It's that volleyball game service where you specify a game ID, and it takes it, and it makes a post request to our scoreboard service saying, give me game information for game ID 1. That's the gist. <laughs> and it's using the Dapper Go SDK. And, you know, we've kind of kept it high level so far, but there's actually quite a bit that's going on here under the hood that's totally abstracted away from you, thanks to Dapper. And one of the key components of Dapper and service invocation in particular are app identities, or app IDs for short. And so for the volleyball game service, it's app ID is uh, or I think it's game service. Uh, and then for scoreboard service, it's just scoreboard. And so in a dapper world, that's just how it knows if you want to do service invocation, which to route that to. So our volleyball game service, we have a game ID in mind. And we say, hey, from our UI, let's go ahead and enter a, U uh, a game ID. And what that does is it's going to send the game ID to its dapper sidecar. And from there, you can see we're making a post request. And we're sending it to our invoke scoreboard service method scoreboard. So what that's doing is it's sending the request to our scoreboard service here, right, that app ID to method scoreboard. So 
the scoreboard handler, and I'm sending over that game ID that I'm interested in. And from there, Dapper is looking at its service discovery component, and it's saying, hey, which app ID, uh, which service am I sending this to? And it knows the scoreboard service. And so it sends that invoke method to the other Dapper sidecar, which, as I mentioned, with Dapper and service invocation, you get a lot with it. You get observability, tracing, logs, resiliency, all, all because you're using Dapper. Uh, so it's, it's really seamless and easy for application developers. Then we finally hit the actual app we're trying to communicate with. So the scoreboard service, we're hitting the scoreboard endpoint with that ID. And now we have our game information. We send it back to the Dapper sidecar. The Dapper sidecar communicates to the other Dapper sidecar through MTLS encryption using uh, Spiffy. And from there, we're able to get our game information. So that's kind of a bit more into the weeds on what's going on here. Something else I touched on right is resiliency. So with service invocation, you do get resiliency right out of the gates. So if for some reason my scoreboard service was down, right, it could be a transient issue, it could be a network issue, and my game service was unable to communicate with it, well, Dapper's got my back. And there's embedded resiliency with service invocation. So it will try three times with some back offs. So I get that retry logic right out of the gates and I don't have to think about implementing custom logic of how many times do I want to invoke my service and at what cadence, right? Dapper's got my back. All right, so I mentioned there's a demo and we're gonna all hope and pray demo gods are with us here today. All right, let's see here. So let me provide some context. You can see here I have, let me get to the right service, okay. So I have that game service. So we're coming at it from the perspective of I'm going to be interacting with my web UI and I'm going to be specifying a game ID that I want information on. And so we can see here we have a scoreboard handler. It's taking that game ID and it's a really basic Go microservice. So I have my, Go, uh, my score handler and it's doing a really, really basic invocation call here. So this is using the uh, Go SDK provided by Dapper. And you can see how clean that looks. So I'm just saying, hey, use invoke method with content. I'm gonna be invoking app ID scoreboard at its scoreboard endpoint. It's a post call and here's my game ID. Here's my content, right? So it's literally that easy to invoke that other service with that built-in resiliency, telemetry, observability, and so forth, all built in. On the scoreboard side of things, what this looks like is I have a Dapper service. And then I have a, it's service.add service invocation handler. So I have that handler for my scoreboard endpoint. And this is doing a really, really basic call to get my state, right? I've given it my game ID and it's just gonna get me my game state, get me that score information. Now that we're all on the same page, we're gonna look at my glorious web UI that I've created here today. So you can see, uh, now you can see, um, it's colorful. We have a nice <laughs> welcome message for you all. If you're interested in finding out more about Dapper, I have a tab here for you. And if you're interested in the uh, distributed tracing through Zipkin, I have that here as well, which I'll show you all. Um, so, Okay, maybe, uh, okay, one to 100. Let's, <laughs> what game do we want information on? What, what number are you thinking of? 50. Wow, okay. Final <laughs> game score for game 50. We had team 50 versus team 51, and it was actually quite a tight game. Team 50 lost by two, because volleyballs went by two. So that's, that's our volleyball UI. Um, and in terms of what that looks like from a logs perspective, you can see here, this is my game service, and I got that response back. That's saying like, hey, here's game 50, here's who won, here's who lost in the score information. And you can see here from uh, the scoreboard service perspective, it retrieved state for game ID 50. Um, and one last thing, actually, let me go ahead and show y'all, because I forgot to show y'all this. Okay, get pods. 
And just so you all know, it's all running. <laughs> it's all right here. So we looked at the game service logs as well as the scoreboard service logs. And going back, one last thing, and let me zoom this in as well. Uh, you can see here, this is what's going on. We have our game sim providing all of that load. We have our games going really, really, really fast for y'all. And the scoreboard service is taking that in, passing it to the state store uh, on the chance that it's game point or higher. And then we have my game service, which is taking that ID from my web UI and sending that to our scoreboard API. That is the gist, and that is service invocation using Dapper. So now I will go ahead and pass it back to Alice for PubSub. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> okay. I think, is this back on? What do you think? Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Sam. And thanks for providing the amazing volleyball context, you know? Um, okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the Dapper Publish and Subscribe API uh, that also, you know, we use in this architecture. So as Sam mentioned, the volleyball game simulator is, you know, simulating people playing volleyball. Maybe it's a tournament. Let's say it's a tournament. And they have published a bunch of games, and they are publishing onto the game topic. Uh, in this case, it's a Kafka broker, but... I'll talk about all the different brokers that, that Dapper uh, enables. And then we have the scoreboard service that is subscribed to the, ca the game topic and then saving this uh, within a database. And these are both enabled with Dapper and they both use a sidecar. Um, okay, so publish and subscribe. Let's get how this works uh, from a bit more of a granular level. Um, so similarly, just as, so as I'm making my post, I have my volleyball game service or my volleyball game simulator. And this is making a post also to localhost. Um, you can see the endpoint that I'm using here is the publish endpoint within Dapper, and then I'm providing two arguments. I'm providing the game pub sub, which is the name of my message broker, and then I'm providing the topic, in this case, which is game. You can also see the data that I'm providing here, which is me, the, the game, whoever won, or the, the updated score of uh, one of my volleyball games. And what's actually happening here is Dapper is uh, making, so you're making a network call from your application to this localhost app or localhost endpoint, and then Dapper is making a call onto the encapsulated message broker, which again, in this case is Kafka, but could be many other things. We are using the Cloud Events 1.0 specification as well to adhere to like another open source standard. Um, but this can also be disabled if you are integrating with like legacy subscribers. Uh, one of the goals of the Dapper project is to like meet developers where they are and ensure that we can support brownfield applications. Um, so cloud events is kind of optional. So from a subscribing perspective, Dapper subscribes on behalf of your application. So in this case, I have the scoreboard service and my, it's Dapper sidecar is going to subscribe on behalf of it to that Kafka broker. Again, all encapsulated via the Dapper API and you can see that it is gonna route the request to the save game uh, endpoint onto scoreboard service. And I get, the same, um, I get the same data, it comes through to that app, and then I can run my business logic. I should also mention here that Dapper does have uh, at least once delivery semantics on top of the, the publish endpoint. So every single subscriber that is subscribed to uh, this topic is guaranteed to receive um, this at least once, and this is across all of the Dapper component implementations, even if that underlying component does not have that, right? Um, and, you know, this is adding sub milliseconds of latency just because we are making those calls over localhost as well. So, you know, as I mentioned, there are a number of different publish and subscribe brokers or message brokers that can be used within Dapper. There's over 18 of them, actually. Um, there's a number of them that I put here, but Essentially, you know, you can, you don't have, you do not have to integrate the message broker into your code for the whatever you're, you know, publishing on. So in this case, there is no like Kafka SDK within my code, right? I'm just going to be publishing onto the Dapper API and then using what is called Dapper component, which I talked about earlier. So here's the sample Dapper component, and I'll show this again. But essentially, this is, you know, the name here is game pub sub, which is that value that I need to keep consistent across uh, both publisher and subscriber. And then I have the connection details uh, within the metadata section, which essentially is the underlying uh, infrastructure details or connection details of the uh, component that I want to connect to. But again, swapping these out is really easy. So what I'll show in a second here is just changing from a Kafka component to a Redis one. And you can see this is a Redis component, looks very similar. <laughs> it is of type pubsub.redis. The one before was pubsub.kafka. Those are like the main differences, as well as there's a few different metadata properties uh, for that um, component implementation. So yeah, and this one also is running in Kubernetes. All this is running on a, on the GKE cluster, 
but uh, this could be running anywhere, right? You could have Redis running locally on your machine. You could have a managed Redis, um, et cetera. That, that host, um, that fully qualified domain name can be changed, of course. So let's get into a demo of what that looks like. So popping over back to the code, um, I have, so similarly, as Sam showed, some of the services, the game simulator service here is the one doing the publish. And you can see in my code, I really am only keeping track of these two properties. I'm keeping track of the pub sub component name, which is game pub sub, and then keeping track of the pub sub topic, which is game. From that perspective, then what I'm doing is I'm again using the Go SDK, and I'm publishing um, via uh, the Go SDK here, just again, and I'm publishing to that uh, localhost endpoint, the one I showed in the previous slide, to game pub sub onto that, that topic, and I'm providing whatever message you know I want to send. In this case, it's the game data. But again, no, like there is no Kafka SDK in here. There's no Redis SDK. It is like only using Dapper. From a subscribing perspective, um, this is also subscribing within the scoreboard service. Let's go to the top here. And you can see a very similar, um, similar variables that I have to keep track of, right? But it really is only that pub sub name, um, the topic, and then in this case, the route that I want to route, I want the messages for the business logic to be routed to. So in this case, all the messages are gonna go to that save game endpoint, and then the business logic um, is actually going to um, yeah, it's going to be routed to another method within my Go code. And this is all using, um, I should mention, it's using two, it's using, in this case, this is the, the component broker, and you'll see, you know, this is also named game pub sub, as I mentioned before, um, but this topic will actually be auto-created by Dapper as well, if, um, if it hasn't already been created within, within Kafka, so it does it dynamically. So let's kick off the game sim service and see this running. So yeah, so as I mentioned, um, we are running all this in Kubernetes. We're running it in GKE, um, but it can be run you know, fully locally. We have um, um, the instructions to run locally as well as in Kubernetes on our readme. So I'm just gonna restart the game sim deployment and you'll see on the bottom here, lots of games coming in, right? Okay. And then if I look at the game sim, on the top here, um, oh, and that was the wrong pod. There you go, we're good. Um, okay, yeah, and the, you can see all of my games. So I had 100 games that were played via the vo in the volleyball tournament, and they've all been updated. So essentially, this is the publisher on the top here, and this is publishing this data. And you can see that this subscriber is also receiving this data, and it's on, you know, round 99. If I scroll up here, it's round 98, round 97. It's done all of the rounds. So that's great, but what about a, using a different component? So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this open. Um, so in this case, right, I'm using um, Kafka. I have a Kafka broker deployed on my Kubernetes cluster, um, and you can see that it's pointing out to that one via the metadata properties. I'm going to apply, I also have a Redis one that is also deployed, so. I'm going to deploy this Redis one, and I'm going to show you that without any code changes, the um, applications will still run. So I have deployed my new component. Essentially, if I get my component now, you'll see that I've swapped this out from a Redis, or Kafka, sorry, to a Redis uh, component. And then if I roll out restart the, I'm going to roll out restart the game. All my deployments. I have to make sure those Dapper sidecars get the new component. And then if I pop over now to the logs again and do a okay, get pods. So things are just cycling over. And then if I go like this. Okay, so there you go. This is the, um, the publisher is now back up and running. And then if I do the scoreboard service, which is the subscriber in this case, 
I should see that I also have saved the game score, again, rerunning every single time. So again, this is round 99, but round 98, round 97, all of these have been like publishing and subscribing. Again, I made zero code changes, right? All I did was update the Dapper component, and essentially I was able to swap out from a Kafka uh, broker to Redis. Uh, again, in this case, both running in my cluster, but this allows me to keep my code really clean and ensure um, that I can make modular, you know, portable applications. The other thing I'll just show really quickly is the fact that the, um, I think I can make this a bit bigger. So this is just Redis Insight. So this is connected to that Redis uh, database on my cluster. And essentially, uh, Dapper uses Redis streams. And you can see in this, uh, here I have this game stream, which in this case was my game topic that I was publishing on. So this was actually automatically created by Dapper. Um, and I can see in here I have all of this data um, that was being sent um, through the game simulator service to that scoreboard service. Um, and this was, yeah, dynamically created at runtime. So didn't have to create that topic. And then with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Sam to close. Thanks, Alice. So I know we've definitely covered a lot of ground here today, and we had a really exciting demo, and the demo gods were with us. Uh, so you can see here, just to kind of recap and remind you all of what we kind of looked at. We looked at how we can take the Dapper open source project and apply it to help a volleyball community and create this demo application to help them see what you can do with Dapper. Right, so we can make some improvements on how they communicate with everyone and let everyone know where to be, what time for our games. So uh, in terms of our scoreboard system that we just looked at, we just had a volleyball game simulator simulating some load for us and putting it onto a message broker where Alice swapped out components for us and showed us some of the awesomeness of Dapper. We had our scoreboard service uh, interacting with the state store in order to save game state as well as retrieve it. And we also had our volleyball game service, which was doing service invocation, providing us a lot of really great uh, things like resiliency, tracing, metrics. Uh, and then we had a really pretty web UI that I made. <laughs> so um, if uh, you are interested in learning more, Dapper has a lot of really great resources. So you can see the docs, um, the dapper.io, you can find out a lot more information there. There is the Dapper Quick Starts repo that I mentioned with a lot of tutorials showing you how to work with Dapper on your local machine as well as in a Kubernetes native environment. Uh, and today's code can be found at that bit.ly link and this bit.ly uh, QR code. And yeah, again, there's a readme, there's a make file, so it should be pretty nice and easy to work with uh, our sample today, uh, just running locally on your system as well as in a Kubernetes native environment. Dapper also has a really, really vibrant community. There are over 3,000 Discord members. Uh, so if you have lots of questions, they are there for you. And don't be shy. Um, there's also a Fortnite community call on the Dapper YouTube channel. And you can catch the latest and greatest. Uh, so the upcoming V111 release will be coming out soon. And so you can catch lots of the updates on our YouTube channel or on Twitter, because I know the tech community is all about Twitter. Um, and also, if you're interested in managing Dapper in production, then check out diagrid.io. So again, my partner in crime here today was Alice, and I'm Sam. And thank y'all. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Do it. Does anyone have any questions, I guess? Yeah. Should ask that. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't. It requires a con the control plane to be deployed on Kubernetes. So there's like four control plane services that you deploy um, within their own namespace. And once you deploy those, uh, there's nothing else required. You can use like, unless you were using like whatever state store that you wanted, so like a state API or something. But no, is the answer. Yeah. Good question. Good question. Yeah. So it. So as some, for something like ECS, since it is running on a cluster, yeah, so primarily people run it on Kubernetes with the control plane. Um, actually, one of the things we're working on at our company is ways to provide sidecars uh, serverlessly to something like an API. Yeah. 
your question. Any other questions? We also have dapper stickers. Okay. Oh yeah, so we many stickers. I know. Stickers yeah. Is there only a sidecar pattern? Is that what you, the question is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so today Dapper is primarily deployed as a sidecar pattern. There is a few projects that we're working on in open source in the sandbox, uh, called, one of them is called Dapper Ambient, and essentially that allows Dapper to be deployed as a deployment. Um, and so it's not necessarily like one-to-one -one from a sidecar perspective, but would be across, is it Premiere or Dane and Set? Dane and Set, yeah, okay. And yes, yeah, so essentially like less of a one-to-one, -one, but more of a, um, yeah, one for node or, you know, allows you to keep track of the replicas there. So, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. I know it's like API driven, which means it's going to be pretty easy mm -hmm. to set up and deploy like one for each agent. Is that something like where you would find more like data abstractions, like search and search to see which agents have current updated or even some that are old, or would that just run like a batch of search and like a or something like that? Yeah, that's a dapper specific. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, good question. Yeah, that's like the that property in, in that case doesn't see the one. The bottom is like the V1 alpha. So like one of the new um, APIs that is, is developed within Dapper is a workflows API, and that one is still in alpha. So it's sort of a way for us to keep track of the APIs that are being similar to the new yeah, user structure. So yeah. Good question. Okay, and we have tons of stickers too, so I'll pull some out if y'all are interested. Um, little dapper stickers and then uh, some little spidery things. <laughs> really solid. <note. laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thank y'all.